which he stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a few few announcements here to make tonight. Uh, I'd like to congratulate a couple of uh, people. I'd, uh, I'd like to congratulate all the people that were involved in the Dakota gathering over the weekend. Uh, it was a wonderful event, and no event like that takes place without a lot of volunteers, and, and I know the city participated uh, quite a bit in that event as well, and it was, uh, it was very nicely done. It was good to welcome our Dakota uh, brothers and sisters and, and the Ho-Chunk to, uh, to our city. So uh, congratulations on a nice event. And I'd also like to congratulate Dahl Chevrolet. Uh, they broke ground today on their new building. Uh, it's a wonderful project. Uh, the city was very involved in helping them. And I uh, was very pleased to hear that they are going for a silver lead certification, which means uh, they're con uh, incorporating a lot of green technology into their, into their building project. So uh, that's, that's very good as well. I have a proclamation I need to read to, tonight as well. Um, it's for Constitution Week, bear with me. Uh, whereas September 17th, 2014 marks the 227th anniversary of the drafting of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention. And whereas it is fitting and proper to officially recognize this magnificent document and the anniversary of its creation, and whereas it is fitting and proper to officially recognize the patriotic celebrations which will commemorate the occasion, and whereas Public Law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designating September 17 through 23 as Constitution Week, now, therefore, I, Mark Peterson, Mayor of the City of Winona, do hereby proclaim September 17th through 23, 2014, to be Constitution Week in Winona, Minnesota, and ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals the framers of the Constitution had in 1787. I'd also like to mention that the air monitoring uh, meeting that was to be held back a couple, or it was going to be held uh, this week, uh, was uh, postponed and rescheduled for October 7th uh, from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock here at City Hall. And this will in involve the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, the Planning Commission, Environmental Quality Board, um, city staff, city council, and uh, uh, look forward to that meeting to uh, get everybody in one room and talk about the issues and try to clear up any misunderstandings there may be and get answers to questions. And um, there will be a public meeting. Uh, it's not a public hearing, though, but it is a public meeting, so the public is invited and welcome. Uh, former City Councilman Tim Breeze reminded me that on September 26th, it is Bita Day, and that's our sister city in Poland, and uh, I'd like to recognize that as well. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Anything from the city manager? Um, Mr. Mayor, just one item. The location of the air quality meeting is set for the senior center. Oh, okay. <laughs> senior center it is. Good to know. <laughs> Anything else? No. All right. Call and roll. Mayor Peterson. Here. Councilman Thurley. Here. Craig. Here. Alexander. Here. Iden. Here. Borzikowski. Here. Double. Here. Under the required public hearings, item 2.1 is a public hearing to consider the resolution to levy assessments for unpaid charges, and an updated list was distributed to the council this evening, and these have payments that were made uh, through this morning, I believe. Call the public hearing open and ask if anybody in the audience would like to speak. If so, please come to the podium, state your name and address. I've never done this before. <laughs> um, my name is Jody Solom. I'm at 521 Deborah Avenue in Winona. And um, we moved to this property on August 2nd of last year, of 2013, and upon that day, the meter reader came out to take our uh, meter, and I guess we received this notice for 167.62, 
Um, this, this actually is um, part of a bill that belongs to a Judy Becker, a previous renter of the home that we purchased from Matthew Sloggy, Matthew and Lindsay Sloggy. And I guess um, right now we're in the process of trying to contact Judy Becker to see what we can do. I'm, uh, it says I was told by the finance department today that if I came today that we could stay at one more week, maybe, without assess additional um, um, percentage, or you know, um, the fees would be waived yeah, for another fee. week. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And um, yeah, because this is we we pay our we've been keeping our water bill up to date, uh, so we just have to go back. Um, I did this bill was higher at one time. It was closer to three hundred dollars, two eighty seven seventy two or something. And uh, I believe that Edina Realty paid a hundred and twenty of it um, in October. Um, but we still have to get some more um, data on that. So, but as of right now, it's us living there, not her, and I don't know what to, where to go from there. So, okay. I guess, what do we do? <laughs> Any questions? All right, well, thank you. Is that, that's it? I guess so. Oh, okay. Oh, so no, no further suggestions at all? Or? Mary? And also, uh, we have your name, so yes, you will have another week to pay without having that administrative fee. Okay. So three weeks. So that's two months, Monday, that you'll have to pay without adding on that administrative fee. Okay, hopefully we can get a hold of her by then. Good luck. Anybody else uh, here wish to speak? I've never done this before either. Um, my property is um, 563 Olmstead Street. Your name? Joelle Odine. Um, I, I've been really good about paying the water bill. It just kind of gotten higher than it's supposed to lately. Um, it's $356.67. Um, la the last time I, the last time I came, missed out on the. Uh, coming to to get it so I wouldn't have to pay the 15% administration fee. And I just need another week because my husband gets paid on Monday. Okay. Well, by showing up tonight, you get your extra week. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hi. My name is Stephanie Hemker. Um, the address in question is 855th. West Street. Um, the property is actually owned by another, it's contract for deed right now. We purchased it in January, so um, we need to contact the owner to find out the extent of the bill, and then it will be paid by next Monday. So. Good. Okay. Thank you Thanks. for coming. Anybody else? Uh, Mary? Fifty-fifth West Street is what the letter says. Travis Hemker. Yeah. For Travis Hemker and Jennifer Hemker. Thanks. Anybody else wish to speak? I'll ask again. Anybody else wish to speak? Last chance. Anybody else wish to speak? Close the hearing. <coughs> I move to adopt Your motion. the attached resolution to levy the special assessments minus the three who get an extra week. Second. second. Okay, a motion by Michelle. I heard Paul first for a second. Any further discussion? George? Uh, just uh, to note that uh, uh, the bills we're talking about tonight is uh, it's a total of of water and sewer and uh, frozen water meters, snow removal, rubbish, garbage removal, mowing, 
the total of all the assessments is two hundred and twenty five thousand four hundred and sixty seven dollars so that's uh, that's a lot of water well, <laughs> yeah um, I just have a comment on this as well is this list um, available in any other form or fashion other than here at the council table as far as is it at City Hall is it at the library is it available online uh, mayor and council the original list was part of the council agenda, agenda so, it so it would be, online, be on, there. online with the council package sure, sure and if anyone wishes to have a copy of the <clears throat> updated list they can contact the city and we can provide that right. And, and again, I agree with Council uh, Councilman Borzakowski that you know, with this amount of, of uh, dollars that are out there, if we basically assume that every property tax increase is worth a percentage of about sixty thousand dollars, that's about four percent. So again, you know, and I know that the city does get its money eventually, but you know we have to deal with this now so um, again uh, I would encourage people that owe these fees to pay them so that, that everybody else can perhaps have a little less property tax bill avoid the penalties uh, Mayor, Council, this does not get spread out over the property tax levy this is individual so John Doe that's on here this amount is on John Doe's property and it's right. not on everyone else's Clear that $267,000 is not added on to our property tax levy right. that we all are to the individual people pay this, we pay the amount that is due for, we'll say, the utility bill, and then there's also an administrative fee that is added right. on, so they're paying for an administrative fee also, and then that total gets added on to their property tax, and then they pay that through their property tax. So I just want to be clear that this is not something that everyone. No, understood. Any other questions or comments? Very none. We'll vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Under <clears throat> the petitions, requests, and communications, item 3.1 is the deferred assessment program and uh, application for Brian Mulvey at 653 East Sanborn. I would move the attached uh, resolution. Second. Motion by Al, seconded by George. Any comments or discussion? Lucy? There, now it's on. Okay. okay. Uh, the city has had this deferred assessment program since 1979. It's allowed under Minnesota state statute, but I do want to point out that it is very rarely used because the fee uh, doesn't go away and it actually compounds annually with interest. I would also note that the applicant was eligible based on the criteria. However, we are looking at this ordinance because many times cities only find it applicable for permanent public improvements and not as a source for uh, unpaid bills. So we'll be taking a look at that uh, as to how we can uh, modify the ordinance and bring it back to council in the future. Since this is such a small amount of money, is it possible for this applicant to make payments rather than have a deferred is a payment schedule an option a payment excuse me payment schedule is an option um, normally anything that is due as of June 30th uh, if we have if if they wanted to set something up we'd have it set up by then because if we if for some reason they wouldn't make payments this would then go on for next year at this time, and then it would be a bill for two years past. So um, I'm not sure, I haven't talked to the person, but I'm not sure if the person uh, has committed to making payments. 
it sounds like it's a deferred assessment in not making payments. Is that right? It sounds like it's a deferred assessment with not making payments. George? Uh, yes. Uh, Commissioner Jim Pomeroy and myself okay. uh, sat in on looking the application over for the deferred assessment, and this certainly is a financial hardship, uh, you know, uh, beyond. It's, uh, you know, there, it's pretty much impossible to make any payments whatsoever. Okay. So just to add that in there, but it certainly, it certainly did meet all of the criteria uh, for, the, for the deferral. Other questions or comments? I have a question. Pam? Yes. Why would you be in, why would we be interested in changing this ordinance? Uh, I in discussions with the city attorney today we discussed the Minnesota state statute and uh, some of the guidelines that are in place and in looking at other cities it's often only used for permanent public improvements and it perhaps wasn't intended to be uh, a plan for unpaid municipal charges. So we'll take a look at that and provide full information and a decision could be made as to whether that's something you'd like to do or not. So. George? I know uh, I've sat on this committee for 15 plus years and this is the second application uh, that I recall that we've ever had. So. Anybody else? We have a motion, second, so there's no further discussion. We'll vote. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 3.2 <coughs> is reappointments to the Architectural Review Board of Vicki Decker and Owen Mornicke. Move to approve those appointments. Second. Motion by George, seconded by Al. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 3.3, reappointments to the Citizens Environmental Quality Committee of Daniel Hall and B. Hoffman. I move to approve. I second this. Motion by Michelle, seconded by Pam. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 3.4 is the Winona Art Walk sign requests for November 10th through November 24th, and they would be posted at Central Park. I move to approve the request and say that I like the way that new sign is looking the post. Very attractive. Mm -hmm. I'll second, second and I concur with Councilperson Alexander. Motion by Michelle, seconded by Al. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 3.5, a request to close St. Charles Street for a benefit on September 20th from 11 to 8. And the street is St. Charles Street between 4th and 5th. Move to approve that request. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by George. Any discussion? Hearing none, vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 3.6 is Winona Senior High School Homecoming Parade Street Closure request for Friday, September 19th. They would also like to close Lee Street for their tailgating on the same date. I move to approve that request. Moved second. by Michelle, seconded by Pam. Any discussion? Just a comment, yeah. Mayor and, and folks here. I, I again would request that they, they go through with the closure on Lee Street, that they make it available for the residential usage of people living in those areas of Lee and West Fourth Street. Okay. Any other comments? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes. <coughs> Item 3.7 is a homecoming parade request by Winona State University for Saturday, October 25th. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Jerry, seconded by Michelle. Any discussion? All right, I'll we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carry. <coughs> Item 3.8 is a request to close Liberty Street by the Polish Museum and Cultural Institute for their festival on October 5th. Move to approve that request. Second. Motion by George, seconded by Michelle. Any discussion? George. Uh, Samajini Javka. Oh, George, look at you. 
<laughs> a real Polish speaking Pole. I love that. <laughs> so I would request that uh, Councilman Borzakowski say that again. I can only say it once. <laughs> I've been memorizing it since yesterday afternoon. <laughs> Uh, once is enough. <laughs> it was impressive. Yeah. Any other comments? We'll vote. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 3.9 is a request for handicap stall on North Baker Street. Move to approve that request. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by Jerry. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 3.10 is the Winona Area Public Schools request to establish 10-minute parking on 7th Street near W.K. School. Move to approve that uh, request. Motion by George. I would second that. Seconded by Pam. Any discussion? I assume that's for during school hours, right? Because residents can park there you. overnight. It would just be like downtown. It'd be the 8 to, or I guess in this case, 7 to 3. Oh. Well, I guess I'd prefer, and maybe this is a modification, that it only be between the school hours so that residents can park on the street during the rest of the time without being at risk for a ticket or towing. Since I'm guessing this has to do with actual school pickup, and yeah, is, is that possible? Since we do have that downtown, no nice weekends. Set hours? It is possible, but it'd have to be signed that way. So as long as the signage can, can reflect that, which I assume it can from Public Works, then yes. So if you wanted to make a motion to amend I do, accordingly. I do want to make a motion to amend that the sign reflect the 10 minute parking be during school hours instead of all day, all night, and during summer. I'll second the amendment. Okay, we have a motion and a second to the amendment. Any discussion on the amendment? George? Uh, now, in regards to school hours, would, you, would we be looking at, what's the earliest kids go to school, 7? We'll talk with the school and see okay. the recommendation. Okay. I'm sure they come before and right. you know, so. time they leave, but we'll ask them. Okay. Uh, and then it's open on non-school days. Okay. And also, let's, let's uh, remember to re include any after-school programs that are going on. So the school day might be open at 2 might be closed at 2.30, but perhaps we, we have a lot of traffic there until until 4.30. Just take a look at the hours. That's just for mm -hmm. Any discussion, further discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, we'll vote on the amendment. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Amendment passes. Any discussion on the original motion? Hearing none, we'll vote on that. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Under unfinished business, item 4.1 is the fee ordinance for 2015. This was introduced at the last meeting and can be considered for final adoption. Uh, there is a recommendation regarding employee rates um, and that we also have a summary publication. So two separate motions are needed, one to adopt the fee ordinance and a second one to adopt the summary ordinance. Do you need separate? Or, okay, well, I'll move to adopt the fee ordinance. Second. Motion by Michelle and seconded by Paul and to adopt the fee ordinance. Well. What was the question? And that motion would be to adopt it as was introduced at the last meeting. So if any of the council members wish to uh, remove the employee discount, there would be, there needs to be a motion to amend that ordinance. So moved. Okay. Motion by Jerry to amend the ordinance through a second to remove the employee discount. I'll second it. Seconded by Al. Discussion? Yes, I, I I certainly understand the, the move that we were attempting to do with the employees, and in most years it sounded, and it was a grand idea, but in a year that we're looking at a sizable increase, it's hard to pass along a savings to just, that can be just borne by the employees at the same time that we're looking at an increase of 6% or so, so that is why 
I'm bringing it up, and I'm glad the recommendation came back the way it is. Okay. And I'd point out that uh, on our agenda item, that staff is recommending mm -hmm. this as well because of the um, discussion about the if if the fees were reduced, there might be some tax implement implement implement. <laughs> Implementations, <laughs> it's easy for me to say, for, for the employees and, and then the staff time needed to process it. So I think this has rationale behind it. Right. I, I didn't understand that at the last meeting when we supported it, but it makes sense to do it now. Okay. And I, I guess I'd also say that I think Winona has very reasonable rental rates, comparatively speaking, and so I'm, I'm in favor of it as well. We'll vote on the uh, amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That carries. The original motion. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That carries. Is there a second motion? And it, the second request would be for the council to approve the summary ordinance for publication. So moved. Motion by Pam. Second. Seconded by George. Discussion? And I'd point yeah. out again as we were talking earlier that this complete uh, list is available on the City Council agenda which is on our city website if people need that yeah. mm -hmm. information. All right. <coughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. And under new, new business, <coughs> item 5.1, is the 2015 City Health Insurance Committee recommendations on the health plan designs and rates. Mary? Mayor and Council, this is our annual request for the 2015 City Health Insurance uh, Plan. And we spent uh, 45 minutes prior to this meeting talking about this in detail. So we have, uh, we'll have a summary now, and we have a representative with us this evening from the firm of Mercer, and uh, he'll just uh, give us a summary of uh, the 2015 health insurance plan. I'd like to introduce Joe Harton. Thanks, Mary. Uh, Mayor and Council, as we discussed in the uh, work session earlier, uh, we've had a, a good year with the Employee Insurance Committee. Uh, this year we had two meetings in April and in August to discuss the overall health insurance marketplace, to look at the city's plans, and to uh, consider budget rates for 2015 based on claims experience for the city. Uh, overall trends for health insurance increases are in the 7.5 to 8% range uh, across the country um, due to many factors including health care reform and increasing costs of various types. Um, the city's health insurance plan after looking at the increase, uh, the increased claims and projecting them into the future, uh, we recommended an initial 7.3 percent increase in costs and as we discussed in the health insurance um, uh, work session, the health insurance committee, after further review based on uh, a plan design change that's required under federal law, uh, has worked that down to a 6.8% increase overall uh, with no plan design changes other than a, a $100 increase in the deductible for the green and red plans. Uh, the health insurance committee also recommended that the city move forward with implementing the Winona Health Healthy Balance Plan, which will help to keep uh, employees and, and dependents healthy over time uh, through, um, uh, through biometric screening and health reimbursement, um, or, or health assessments and health coaching. Um, and also the Health Insurance Committee also looked at and agreed to continue to consider new evolving things in the health insurance marketplace, including private exchanges and other types of cost reduction methods as, uh, as they may occur. Thank you. I would make a motion to approve the City Health Insurance Committee's recommendations for 2015. Second. Back. Motion by Michelle, seconded by Pam. Discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 5.2 is the 2015 rates for the employee <coughs> life insurance long-term disability insurance, flex spending, and health reimbursement account administration. Move to approve the 
2015 rates as indicated? Second. Motion by Al, seconded by Michelle. Discussion? Just to comment, those yes. rates did not change from last year. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All those same sign. Carries. Item 5.3 is the Health Insurance City Manager's Financial Recommendation. I'd, uh, I guess I'd move to introduce the attached resolution. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by George. Discussion? Hearing none, George? I think the manager did a very good job on this. I, I agree. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 5.4 is an ordinance amendment regarding section 67.03 relating to the municipal storm sewer system. I'd make a motion to introduce the ordinance. I'll second it. Motion by Michelle and seconded by Al. George? Yeah, uh, Keith, what are we doing here? <laughs> Mayor and Council, some time ago, a, uh, one of the properties, a zone was changed and a new zone was created uh, on the townhouses down by the river. The storm sewer ordinance has a specific charge for each zoning uh, classification in the city. So there was not one specifically for that property. It, it stayed under the old uh, zoning that it was previously. This just gives a, a fee percentage for this new zone, which is exactly the same amount as before. So it really is just letting the new ordinance catch up to the, the addition of a new zoning designation. Thank you. Other questions? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 5.5 is the purchase of new police squads. I make a motion to accept the Sugarloaf Ford bid of $81,084 for the three vehicles. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by Jerry. Discussion? Just a comment, it's nice to keep the business local. Mm -hmm. All right, any other comments? We'll vote. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 5.6 is the final plat for the Valley Oaks 7th subdivision. I would point out there are two separate resolutions and they need to be acted on separately. And also distributed this evening were a number of amendments in the development agreement. I would move to concur with the commission's recommendation and to accept the attached resolution granting approval to the final plat for the Valley Oak 7th subdivision. Motion by George, second that. seconded by Michelle. Some comments? Questions? I would, uh, since we just received the list of, the list of amendments, I'd like uh, perhaps Mr. Muller would speak to the amendments to, to explain what the, the amendments do. I would just point out the amendments relate to the second resolution on the development agreement. So okay. So why don't we we'll wait for that. deal with the first uh, right. motion? If you prefer. Okay. Any further questions? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, it carries. Is there another motion? I would so move that we approve the developer's agreement with the amendments. Is that the proper way to say it? Okay, motion by George. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Paul. I will open it up for questions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Moeller, would you, uh, or uh, Chris, would you address the question? Yeah, the, you're, you're approving the agreement as presented to you in its amended form tonight. So the resolution is simply adopting. So the, the agreement in the packet is not the final agreement. The agreement that is before you that was handed out is the final agreement. And uh, that's what we've been trying to work out um, with the developer. And we've 
finalize that at this point in terms of getting the information that we need to complete it, and that includes the amount of the letter of credit based on the estimated cost of public infrastructure, and then there were a number of other changes as well. Does that answer your question? That's good. Oh, oh, I'm talking to Pam, not me. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions or comments before we vote? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next item is 5.7, and it's the Hamilton Street Tennis Courts. We have a recommendation before us to close the Hamilton Street Tennis Courts. So moved. I'll second that. <coughs> All right, a motion by Paul and second by Jerry. Discussion. Chad, do you want to say anything about tennis courts? Uh, Mayor and Council, as we've discussed previously in uh, discussions during the CIP process, Hamilton Street courts are in need of repair, and the city went through a process to reevaluate all the tennis courts, including Hamilton. Uh, Hamilton came in at a price tag to refurbish at roughly $188,000. Um, it would need to uh, be, um, in loose terms, dug up, a uh, new base built, two new courts built, uh, new fencing, um, and again, total estimate was $188,000. Our proposal suggests removing that court system from um, the park, you know, tennis court overall system of number of courts we have to concentrate our efforts on um, refurbishing to start with the courts at the band shell. So we would have a centralized location within Lake Park um, that's used by the high school uh, programs as well and then move through uh, the rest of the systems that are in neighborhood parks. So the tennis court evaluation that we had conducted does put a price tag or estimated costs for the remaining uh, parks within the system, uh, none of which had the high price tag of Hamilton. Um, Hamilton was the highest to refurbish. And so again, just to reiterate, because of the Banshell location and because the Banshell is in the current budget that you tentatively approved, to be refurbished, we would suggest removing these courts. I'm going to ask the question again, just for anybody that might be listening. But uh, there are plans for pick pickleball, and where would the, where would that be? Just want to clarify that we don't have any plans for pickleball at the band shell tennis courts. But as we go through to the next neighborhood parks, that would be our suggestion: is that we add pickleball uh, lines to those courts. But as of right now, there's no plans for the band shell course, just so I'm clear on that. With the, some of the other ones? But possibly. some of the other neighborhood parks that need tennis courts redone, I think that would be the time when we would come in and add those, add the striping for uh, the pickleball courts. Okay, thank you. Pam. Yes, I would like to know if we are, how popular are the tennis courts, and will people be disappointed that they're not allowed, that there's going to be two or three or four fewer courts now? with taking away Hamilton. Are they busy? Well, it's probably hard for us to estimate a number. Okay. Interestingly enough, Hamilton Street is busy. Um, interestingly enough, we've seen people out there playing on the courts in the condition they are in right now, which is um, surprising. I think they're popular because of Lake Park location, because they're centrally located. But I think if we redo the Banshell tennis courts, that you know, that, that again will be the draw from late, the late park perspective. Are there going to be some individuals that are upset? I would assume that there would be individuals upset any time we remove uh, recreational facilities. But in my recommendation, I think that um, spending that kind of dollars to refurbish that court could go a long ways to the other courts that we have. In total, we have 17, I think it is, tennis courts in total. And so removing two, to me, seems realistic. So how many are at Hamilton, excuse me? Uh, Hamilton courts have two courts. Two courts, OK. Thank you. Paul? Well, for the benefit of the public, would you explain what pickleball is? 
Uh, pickleball is a smaller version of tennis, I guess is the best way to say it. Uh, it's really popular with the older adult population, especially, because the court is condensed. Um, the paddle you, you use is really a hybrid between a, um, a racquetball and a tennis racket, sort of size-wise. Um, it's a harder paddle, and the ball, in layman's term, is more like a wiffle ball consistency. So it's a, it, it's a lot less, I guess the term would be a lot less maybe strenuous than tennis because the court is condensed. Uh, yeah. um, Chad, I have a few questions on the court itself. Uh, you know, it, it, it has deteriorated, but I guess people might ask, why has it deteriorated? Has there been, an, is the city not maintaining the courts, or is the ground, you know, difficult? Uh, what caused the court to be in the state it is in right now? Well, I think wear and tear over the years certainly is an answer. I think that there has been some pooling on the court, so um, we've seen some settling in the ground that's caused cracking on the courts and pooling. Um, I think this is a good example of um, us not maintaining the tennis courts over the last 10, 15 years. This is, Hamilton Street is not the only, ten, all 17 tennis courts in this evaluation are in need of repair. Okay. Um, so this is not unique. I think what's important, again, maybe to note in relation to that question is we're, we want to maintain, or to refurbish the band shell courts because they're actually in the best shape. And so for us to redo those now before they deteriorate to a point where the cost becomes higher as we, th we think is our, is our best strategy and then again go to each of these neighborhood courts. So we went through a process for a period of time, Albo, just to go one step further of mm -hmm. we would allocate money every other year for tennis courts. Uh, right. Starting about three or four years ago, I think we did that. So we did a playground in a park, a tennis court, and alternated the years. And tennis courts were on odd number of year. Prior to 2009, 10, before uh, we made some reductions in park maintenance, tennis courts were in there on an annual basis. Yeah, okay. Uh, another question is, uh, well, two questions. One, what is the cost to remove the tennis court? And two, what's going to be constructed or, or put in its place? Uh, we don't have a total cost to remove. Uh, we're gonna try and do as much of that work in-house as possible, so park maintenance, removing the fence, removing the actual material from the tennis court. Our largest concern is the uh, disposal of that material. That, that will probably be the highest cost. Um, as far as what is going to go in its place for right now, we're just going to level the area and seed it and just really keep it as green open space for the time being. Okay, George? Let's say if Paul and I wanted to play tennis tomorrow morning, right, Paul? Pickleball. Yeah, pickleball. <laughs> Would we, do we have to reserve those courts and we just pull up and start uh, batting away? Nope, the tennis courts are all on a first come, first serve basis. With the exception during the tennis season for the school, the schools do reserve our band shell courts and then we do, <clears throat> we do, in a sense, block them. But if you wanted to go to Fourth Ward Park to play, you could walk on those courts without reservations. Same goes for Knott Valley, Windcrest, um, Tillman. Okay. So those locations are, our other neighborhood locations, the tennis courts are first come, first serve. Now I know uh, Fourth Ward Park, Sobieski Park, about eight years ago, 10 years ago, the Miss Winona at the time did a fundraiser, uh, which, it, which it was resurfaced at that particular time. What do we see happening to that surface now uh, coming down the line here? Because I say, you know, it's, uh, it's getting beat up. You know, there's no doubt about that. And I know a lot of people do, do use it. Don't ever try taking those out of there. Uh, people do use it. They use it a lot. Uh, what's the plan for resurfacing that? Or would, would there be money available here to go forth resurfacing those courts? Uh, the money we're saving in in the Hamilton resurfacing is going toward the band shell project next year. 
Uh, Sinclair is in the list of courts that need to be redone, or Fourth Ward, sorry, so Bieski Park is in that list. It is um, an area that we think would move up the priority list because it would be a good location to do pickleball courts because the Fourth Ward uh, tennis courts have the extension for the basketball court that's there as well, so it's basically one large surface. So actually not taking out those tennis courts, but having one tennis court, one pickleball court, and a basketball court we think would be a good uh, advantage to have, and so Sobieski certainly is moving up the list. Okay, and I see in here also it was mentioned that this is where Hamilton Street could be extended. Uh, where did that come from? That's just describing where the tennis court is. Oh, okay, okay. It's, not okay. It's, uh, it's not a recommendation. Oh, okay. I know, so it could be extended. So, okay. Jerry? You say that um, during the tennis season, the schools reserve uh, some of the courts, especially the ones down at uh, the band shop. Um, and obviously, we're all for all of the relationships and sharing, and et cetera, et cetera. But we're talking bucks here. When they reserve those, is there any fees, any anything that we get? Uh, we don't collect fees from the school district to use those tennis courts. And the reason we don't collect those fees is because we have a reciprocity agreement with them. So anytime we use any of their facilities, they don't charge the city in return. Fair enough. Thank you. Yep. Good question. Any other questions? That's not. Thank you. We'll vote. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 5.8 is the Bud King Ice Arena grant application. Yes. I move to approve the resolution. Second. Motion by Al, second by Jerry. This is to allow the city to uh, submit a grant application by October 1st for $200,000, which should help pay for part of the, uh, the refurbishing. Any other questions? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Passes. Item 5.9 is to revise two Winona transit routes. We first moved the target stop from Green East to the red route and removed the stop at Kmart uh, pending the store closure. Okay. Move. Second. Motion by Paul, seconded by Michelle. We need discussion. <coughs> Thank you. I just I will note that I received a phone call recently from somebody that was interested in having the buses come out to Brookview and, um, and Monica is looking into that whether or not there's enough interest there. Anything else? If not, we'll vote. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carried. <coughs> Item 5.10 is a report on the assessment role for the 2014 sidewalk project and to schedule the public hearing for Monday, October 6th. Move to approve uh, to set that hearing date. Motion Second by that. George, seconded by Pam. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 5.11 is the report on the assessment role for the 2014 Franklin Street reconstruction project and to schedule the public hearing for Monday, October 6th. So moved. Motion by Michelle. Second. Second by Paul. Discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 5.12 is the resolution ordering assessment of costs for the 2014 miscellaneous utilities, and this resolution would order the cost to be assessed. So Was that a motion? Yeah. Okay, sorry, second. I didn't hear you. Motion sorry. by Michelle, seconded by George. Discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Carries. Item 5.13 is a report on the assessment roll for the 2014 miscellaneous utilities and to set the public hearing for Monday, October 6th. Move to approve that hearing date. Second. Motion by George, seconded by Michelle. Discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. And item 5.14 is the 2014 sewer and water access fees for 370 West Burns Valley Road. And this would be to set the final assessment hearing. So moved. Motion by Paul. Second. Seconded by George. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. And we are at council concerns. Uh, I think we should start with George tonight. All right, thank you. Uh, one department that never seems to, well, they do as far as giving uh, kudos to and thanking them out publicly, that's the city inspections department. Uh, had a situation in the fourth ward that was involving excessive trash. Uh, I was in contact with Inspector Greg Olson. Uh, two, three neighbors were in contact with uh, Inspector Olson and it was taken care of immediately, efficiently. Uh, the inspection department was down, he was down there, and they handled this very, very efficiently, and uh, it, uh, it worked well. Uh, the neighbors uh, were kind of surprised how fast that all this happened to get, uh, to get resolved and taken care of. So uh, a thank you to that, part, to that department and Inspector Olson. Uh, also, Two Saturdays ago, uh, Tesla Mitchell here, she, with the help of her friends, she hosted a neighborhood block party. And if you want to party, this girl knows how to party. Uh, there was live music and uh, there were no drinks that I seen anyway, but it was a very, very nice event. And Tesla, thank you to you and your, your many friends that helped you organize that. It went off very, very well. Also, uh, happy anniversary to John and Bev Cunningham, who will be celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary this week. And to close on a sad note, uh, condolences to the Morgan family on the passing of the father and husband, Roger. Uh, Roger, a longtime Fourth Ward resident and very good husband, father, grandfather. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, uh, I would uh, like to inquire about the progress of our city traffic study. Thanks. I requested that last at the last meeting. Just a, just a brief comment. We're meeting with the consultant this week, and when we get an update on that, we'll get back to you on it from that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Paul, or anything else, Pam? Okay, Paul. <coughs> I would like to see us uh, make contact to the uh, MnDOT commissioner on our railroad track crossings and uh, it's my understanding from what we received from uh, both our state senator and our representative that uh, it's our responsibility to contact the commissioner to initiate to get these tracks fixed and in particular with winter coming on they're not going to get any better and um, and also the hazard of people having to make to, uh, right turns as opposed to just going straight across the, the uh, tracks on Main and, um, and, and the other crossings as well, so it's not just one. And, um, but we need to come down heavy and, um, and get some action out of the railroads or some commitment from them that it will be taken care of. I do understand that we have a commitment from the railroad that, and MnDOT that the Main Street crossing should be done next month. So that okay. should help a little bit. Um, Michelle? Nothing Gary? Nothing to say here. Okay, Al. Uh, seems to be a MnDOT topic tonight. <laughs> um, I was critical last week about MnDOT's lack of response to some signal lights that were out at Huff and Highway 61. I am here to, to thank them and give them kudos for their prompt response to the accident at the St. Mary's Pedestrian Crossing Bridge on Highway 14. I thought that, that they responded as quickly as any state agency I've seen and took care of the problem. It took a little longer for some of the folks in Gilmore Valley and, and, Valley, uh, and uh, Knopp Valley to, uh, uh, to their liking, but it was taken care of. The long term, as I understand it, is that MnDOT is planning to rebuild that pedestrian crossing for safety. But in the meantime, if you're driving on Highway 14, um, east or west, or north or south, depending on how you orient <laughs> the road, um, 
that you know there is a pedestrian crossing there's a lot of orange barrels just be careful cautious slow down and yield to a pedestrian and if you're a driver in the car behind that's yielding to a pedestrian be aware of that that's your responsibility so I thank them for that uh, also uh, uh, Mayor uh, uh, Peterson was mentioning uh, Constitution week and uh, we have a note from Project Fine that there will be a citizen day, citizenship day uh, celebration on September 17th from 2 to 3 at the conference room B at the Winona County Office Building. I thought it was kind of interesting because uh, the note said that they celebrate Constitution Day and recognize new Americans in our community. Uh, and there will be voting registration, polling place information as well available. So I thank Project Fine for putting that together and I think it's a worth, worthwhile event. Uh, and that's all I have tonight. Okay, thank you. I, I guess I have an alibi oh, around okay. here. Um, I did not read the entire thing, but I know enough to say something about it. I want to also give uh, congratulations to our past uh, fire chief, Ed Kroll. Um, evidently, recently, he had won yet another national level power national level powerlifting championship, and uh, it was the age group. I think it was. He probably doesn't want the age group blood out there, but it was in the 60s. But not only is that amazing, but um, Chief Crawl has kept up that level of competition, that level of excellence, that, that state, high state and national level for the past three decades. So for so many of the rest of us, when we're nearing kind of that age and we kind of expand in the waistline and sit around, He's still hitting the gym six, seven days a week and competing at a national level and winning. So uh, definitely congratulations to him. <laughs> yeah, great. And on the consent agenda, there are three items. Approval of the minutes from September 2nd, a claim against the city by Nicole Banta, and a claim against the city by Helen Kukowski. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second by Al, seconded by Michelle. Any discussion? Hearing none. Vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Mayor, I move we adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning say aye. 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 We're adjourned. <laughs> Just going to the downtown gym.